Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm here today to talk about a folk story, a story of the people of America. It's one that gets passed down from generation to generation. Today's story is about a man named John Henry, and this is one of my absolute favorite folk tales. I'm going to read through the text one time, very slowly. I'm going to go back sentence by sentence and break down what everything means in a more detailed way. And then at the end, I'm going to read it again at full speed. And I hope you can try to follow along and understand a bit more than you did the first time. All right, here we go. John Henry is an American folk hero from the late 1800s and is based on a real person. He was born a slave in the 1840s during the Civil War. The Emancipation Proclamation was passed by Abraham Lincoln and the slaves were freed, including John Henry. John went out to look for work. Now, the tall tale of John Henry has many versions. There are many, many songs about him, novels, plays, children's books, and more. It is said that he was born with a hammer in his hand, that he was over seven and a half feet tall, that he was double-jointed and could swing two 20-pound hammers at a time. John found work as a steel driver on the construction of railroads. He drove railroad spikes with his gigantic hammer and also drilled holes with that hammer. Most men took three to five swings to hammer a railroad spike, but it took John just one mighty swing. When a mountain was in the way and there was no way around, they had to go through. John and other men would hammer holes into the rock and then put dynamite into the holes and blast them open. One day, however, a new steam-powered drill came into town, hissing and moaning. It was going to put the men out of work because they said it could be faster and more efficient. John Henry challenged the machine drill to see who could drill through the mountain faster. No one believed it could be done. Working furiously and diligently, John swung two hammers. Clanging and banging rang out and echoed in the hills. It was said that all you could see were the sparks coming out of the dust and darkness of the tunnel. After a full day, John had won the competition. His fellow workers cheered him on in all of his triumph and glory. Man versus machine, David versus Goliath. Then, in all the commotion, John was seen teetering and tottering and fell dead from the extraordinary effort. John Henry died with a hammer in his hand. And to this very day, if you listen closely, you can still hear the banging of John Henry's hammer echoing through the hills and tunnels of America. Alrighty, so let's do a little breakdown here. So John Henry is an American folk hero from the late 1800s and is based on a real person. So here we have folk hero. Folk is another word for common people, the people. It's actually a German word, uh, like Volkswagen, the people's wagon, folk. And 1800s, that's 1800. 1800. 1900 would be 1900s, precisely. Um, something that is based on a real blank, based on a real story, based on a real person, based on true events. It's where its foundation is. What's the, what's the root? What's the bottom? Okay. He was born a slave in the 1840s. So from 1840 to 1849, that would be the 1840s. During the Civil War, 
the Emancipation Proclamation was passed by Abraham Lincoln, and the slaves were freed, including John Henry. So a civil war is a war in the country itself. In America, it was between the North and the South. We had the Confederate was the Southern Army, and the Union Army was the Northern Army. The Emancipation Proclamation, that's a fun one to say, is basically the document that was passed by Abraham Lincoln, the president, that stated that there would be no more slavery. There would be no more slaves, that all slaves existing would be freed. Now, the details, that's another story. But So John went out to look for work. That's pretty straightforward. Now, the tall tale of John Henry has many versions. So a tall tale is like uh, a story, tale, T-A-L-E, not on the back of an animal, but a story. And it's tall because it's, it's uh, exaggerated. It's made bigger than perhaps what it was. Like if, if your uh, uncle goes on a fishing trip and he tells the story of the fish he caught every time, the fish gets bigger when he tells the story. This starts to become a tall tale. Next sentence. There are many, many songs about him, novels, plays, children's books, and more. So I used many, many there. Just You can do that in a, in a kind of folk setting. It's not academic, but... Some people will use it twice it's a, to, to really make sure you, you understand the point, to drive the point home. It is said that he was born with a hammer in his hand, that he was over seven and a half feet tall, that he was double-jointed and could swing two 20-pound hammers at a time. So let's break that down. So... It is said that he was born, came out of his mom with a hammer in his hand. So it's like he's always had a hammer. Maybe a, a famous f uh, football star is like, oh, he was born with a, f with a football at his feet. Or he was born with a basketball in his hands. That he was over seven and a half feet tall. That's 2.3 meters, so pretty tall. Uh, that he was double-jointed. Double jointed, what's that mean? Double jointed is when you're very, very flexible. You can move your your joints, like your fingers, your elbow, your knee, your shoulder. The type of people that can curl up into a ball and you can put them in a small box. People that work in the circus, maybe. Or just your friend who can move his fingers in a weird way. That he could swing two 20-pound hammers. 20 pounds is about 9 kilos, so big hammers. Next sentence. John found work as a steel driver on the construction of railroads. So a steel driver. Driver here is not driver like I drive a car. Driver is something that you push in. So he was pushing in steel. He drove... Again, past tense of drive. He drove railroad spikes with his gigantic hammer and also drilled holes with that hammer. So he, he pushed the spikes. What are spikes? Like a nail, a hammer and a nail, but a spike is big. Something long and pointy, like a porcupine has spikes on it. With his gigantic, it just means big, gigantic, humongous, um, and also drilled holes with his hammer. So drill, um, something that makes holes into something. Most men took three to five swings to, sorry. Most men took three to five swings to hammer a railroad spike, but it took John just one mighty swing with his huge hammer. So breaking this down, most men took three to five, so maybe three, maybe four, maybe five, three, two, five. Not the number two, but <laughs> T-O-2. And John just did it in one 
with his mighty swing of his mighty hammer. Mighty meaning strong. So a strong swing with a big hammer. And a heavy hammer, huh? All right, next sentence. When a mountain was in the way and there was no way around, they had to go through. So you're building a, you're building a railroad and you come across a big mountain. You can't go around. You have to go through. So John and other men would hammer holes into the rock and then put dynamite into the holes and blast them. So they'd basically take the hammer with some kind of drill bit, like a little something that you could hit the hammer into. It would make a hole in the rock, and then you'd put dynamite, the boom dynamite. Uh, TNT is dynamite. Dynamite, something blows up. And it says blast them. Blast is to, to blow up. Like uh, when they do rockets into space, they go three, two, one, blast off. And that's when the engines start. Next sentence. One day, however, a new steam-powered drill came in, hissing and moaning. So a new steam-powered, steam-powered. The old uh, railroads, the old trains or locomotives they call them they were powered by steam that's how they that's how they moved so then the next line is hissing and moaning this is something that i'm uh, i'm giving the attribute to the machine like it's a like it's a living thing like a cat when a cat is angry it hisses hiss and moan is like <laughs> you might moan if you're in pain Next sentence, it was going to put the men out of work because they said it would be faster and more efficient. So everybody believed that the machine was going to be so fast and so so good, so efficient that the men would not, you wouldn't need humans anymore. You wouldn't need men to, to work. John Henry challenged the machine drill to see who could drill through the mountain faster. So John said, you're not going to take my job. I'm going to show you that I'm better than the machine. I can go faster. I can drill faster. And no one believed it could be done. That's pretty easy. No one really believed it could be done. Working furiously and diligently, John swung two hammers. So he was working so hard, furiously, very hard, fast and furious. <laughs> John Henry, fast and furious. And diligently means consistently, just, you know, fast, but also not stopping, very diligent. He swung two hammers. Clanging and banging rang out and echoed in the hills. Clanging. This is an onomatopoeia. It's a word that is for a sound. When you hit a hammer, the hammer goes clang or bang. And that rang, so ring, to ring out means to, to sound out very loudly. It rang out and echoed, 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 echoed in the hills. It was said that all you could see were the sparks coming out of the dust and darkness of the tunnel. So if you imagine a tunnel into a mountain, all you could see were sparks. When you hit metal against metal, it's sparks. Sparks, like they start a fire, flint, sparks. All you could see was the sparks and dust in the air because of all the, all the dynamite and the explosions and everything. So after a full day, John had won the competition. Woo, John won. His fellow workers cheered him on in all of his triumph and glory. Triumph, to, to do something extreme and, and to win, right? I triumphed, good triumphs over evil and glory. Man versus...